Hello, this is Bill Worrell with Virginia Cooperative Extension. For today's episode of 15 Minutes in the Forest, I'm going to take you into the woods and look for frogs. We're going to interview a wildlife researcher to learn more about his research project into a specific species of tree frogs. We're hoping we're going to be able to hear some frogs and see some frogs as we learn more about this species. So join us as we go looking for frogs. My name is Kevin Hammond. I'm a collegiate assistant professor of wildlife conservation at Virginia Tech. I'm in the College of Natural Resources and in the Department of Fish and Wildlife Conservation. So we've been studying mountain chorus frogs now in southwestern Virginia for the last couple of years. Uh, it's a collaborative project that we're doing with the University of Virginia at Wise too. And our goal is to really figure out where these frogs are located in Virginia. From the late 1800s till uh, really about 2015, we only had about 20 records of mountain chorus frogs in the state. So we kind of thought they might be uncommon or, or maybe rarer than other frogs. And that was the reason we started this project. So the big thing we're, we're doing is we're asking folks just like yourself uh, to listen on your property when you're walking around your own land, uh, when you're out in, in public places, public parks, or even just sometimes driving down the road. In March, April, and sometimes even into early May, if you hear the mountain chorus frog, note where you are and just report that for us. Uh, it's also beneficial if you have a cell phone, if you can take a quick recording of it. It can be just a recording or even the video. But these observations are very, very important to us. And the mountain chorus frog is not a really big frog. It's only about an inch in, in length. And we often call it the uh, backwards parentheses frogs. Because if you look out on its back, instead of having an X like the spring peeper, it's got two marks that kind of form backwards parentheses. It also has a little dark mask that runs from through its face and across its eye. And its call, which we'll record a little later tonight for you, often sounds like a squeaky wheel. Imagine if you had one spot on your axle or one spot on a wheel, and every time the wheel turned around, it hit that spot, it made the noise. That's what they, that's what we often tell folks to use as a way to remember their call. So again, we're asking folks just like yourself, if you don't mind, if you're out and about, and can see or listen and hear a mountain course frog, if you could report that for us, we would really appreciate it. One of the reasons we're studying mountain chorus frogs is we're really trying to get a good idea of their distribution in Virginia. There was some potential concern that the animal might be declining or that we had so few populations in Virginia that they might warrant some type of additional protection. So the purpose of studies just like this is we want landowners, we want citizen scientists, we want people that are hunting, fishing, hiking, biking, when they see one of these frogs to report it. Because when they do, that lets us know that we have new locations. We began the project in 2015 with about 20 locations in the state. And as of early 2022, we've exceeded over 160 new locations now within the state of Virginia. So uh, work, and, and thanks to folks just like yourself, have helped show that really this animal is not necessarily deserving of any extra preservation. So now we're just trying to learn more about it and figure out what types of habitats it does best in. You might say, well, why are you studying a frog like this? Small frogs, these tree frogs, are really big links in food chains. So they're consuming a lot of things that we don't necessarily like, a lot of insects, and then things that we often get excited about, things like even owls and, and even some, some of our medium-sized mammals will eat these frogs. So they're very valuable to the ecosystem, and they're really kind of a nice jewel for us to have in southwest Virginia. We're actually in Bland County now along the edge of a, of a small road and you'll notice we're standing by a ditch and a lot of folks might not think that a, a frog that's kind of uncommon would be in just a roadside ditch. And actually a lot of our work has found that this is their preferred habitat. They love places just like this. Shallow ditches, really small ponds and puddles. You don't find them in a traditional, say, farm pond. They like these areas that almost act a little like a vernal pool in the sense that they dry up later in the season. So when you're thinking about places on your property to look, you might not necessarily think of the traditional spot you would find a frog. Look at some of these really, really shallow areas along roads. It doesn't have to be a paved road. It could be a gravel road. It could be even be a, a logging road that's been cut in. But if there's a small area that's holding water, you very well could find mountain chorus frogs there. Mountain chorus frogs range from Pennsylvania to Mississippi. In Virginia, we can typically find them in the southwest region of the state. 